Hello, it's Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating my journal pages inside this standard size traveller's notebook insert with Tomo River paper, which I keep inside the vintage light cover and they're both from Start Bay notebooks. I was in the mood for doing something really soft and delicate feeling today, so I've gathered a few supplies that I think I want to use and have put them on my desk ready. I've also placed an under A board underneath that left hand page to give me a slightly flatter surface to work on. I'm going to start off by adding some of this brown classic-y washi tape along the left hand page and this tape is really nice and wide but I decided I wanted something a little narrower for this so I've torn it right along the middle and all of the washi tapes, stamps and stickers that I'm using in this video I think come from London Gifties but if they're from anywhere else I will definitely know, let you know and of course everything will also be linked in the description box down below. I have a pack of these paper doilies in my stash which I haven't used in ages and I thought it would be perfect for that delicate feel that I was going for. So I folded it and I'm now cutting along that to create the size that I want and I want something so that it just peeps out from the left hand side but doesn't take up too much of my writing space. To glue the doily onto my page, I'm going to be using some Pritt stick. I really liked being able to see some of that brown tape through the pattern of the doily. I thought it was really nice to see it just peeping through. The next thing I'm going to do is add a pressed flower sticker. And as I mentioned, most of the things that I will be using have come from the London Gifties shop. And if you do decide to have a look at anything that Christine is offering, then if you use the code Helen at the checkout, you will get a free roll of Journal with Purpose and London Gifties collaboration washi tape included with your order. I really love the delicate look of the flower that I'm going for. Again, I felt it really would fit in well with the overall feel that I was going for. These flowers have a peel off backing and I'm gonna pop that so that it's mainly on top of the doily, but also creeping out into my page as well. And I'm then going to add a thin strip of washi tape along the bottom of the flower stem to make it look like I'm using that to hold it on my page. The next thing I decided to do was use this pressed flowers washi tape and I'm going to cut out some of the individual designs and put them along the right hand page. And this tape is completely transparent and matte. So when you cut the designs out, they look exactly like stickers. And also they kind of just look like you've added them to your page with paint or that they're natural flowers because there's no gloss on them at all. I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos, because I often get asked about how much I plan of my journal pages in advance. The answer to that is not very much really. I tend to have an idea of a theme in mind, so how I want my pages to look, whether I'm going for something soft and delicate with a vintage feel, or if I'm after something with lots of colour. 
and that helps me to get the supplies around me that I think might work for that journal page but I don't tend to really plan anything out too much in advance unless there's a particular technique that I really want to try on my journal pages. I decided to add five of these images in total and I started off with the top, bottom and middle flower just to try and make sure that I could space them out evenly and I really like how that's given me a lovely floral border. The next thing I'm going to do is add a stamped image to some transparent paper and this is almost like vellum, a bit like tracing paper and I've had this for years but if I can find something similar then I'll definitely leave it linked down below. And I really like stamping on this type of paper because it adds another layer and texture to your journal pages. The stamp I'm using is Paper Artsy brand and I'm using some black stays on ink. And I do find when I stamp on this transparent paper, it takes quite a long time for the ink to dry. So that's something definitely to be aware of because it's extremely easy to smudge. I'm now using a ruler to tear around the outside of the stamped image. With most papers, I'll just tear them freehand, but I have found with transparent paper that it's a little bit difficult to control. So using a ruler seemed a good option, especially as I didn't want a really neat cut line because I felt that having slightly rougher edges would help tie it in to everything else on my page. The next thing I'm going to do is tear up some craft paper. I've recently been through my stash of papers, stamps and all sorts of things and I've changed the order of how I'm keeping things to encourage me to use some of the things that I haven't used very much. Hence I found packs of the craft paper, transparent paper and it's been really fun to try them out in my journals because it feels like it's been far too long since I last used them. I've now used the Pritt stick to add the craft paper to my page and I'm just deciding where I want my transparent image to go. I did add a little bit of Pritt stick to the back but it doesn't hold vellum paper down particularly well because it's got quite a shiny feel to it and I didn't want any other blobs of glue showing through either. So I'm going to add again some thin strips of washi tape to help it stay on my page. The next thing I'm going to do is create a wax seal and I've got this stick of brown herban wax and I'm using a craft knife to cut out some slices which I'm then going to add into my melting spoon. I often use wax beads because honestly I find them a bit easier but I really wanted that brown colour so I thought I'd get the cutting mat and knife out and just slice off some of the pieces. Again, you can melt with the wax sticks straight onto your page, but I never find that I'm able to control it very well. So I thought it'd be far easier to add them into my melting spoon. So I'm then going to use a tea light candle and hold the melting spoon over the top until those slices of wax have completely melted. 
I absolutely love adding wax seals to my page. The only slight disadvantage I find is that they make my journal pages really lumpy. But that's partly why I use that underlay board because it really helps me because then I can kind of disguise the lumps and bumps when I'm writing on top. Now that the wax has completely melted, I'm going to gently pour that in a circular motion on top of the craft paper. And I try and go fairly quickly so that the wax doesn't have a chance to harden, but I never find that you need to rush it too much. And then I'm going to press my wax seal stamp on top. And obviously, traditionally, these types of seals are used for sealing down envelopes. And sometimes I put them an, over the bottom of flower stems or to hold something on my page. But I also really like adding them just as decorative elements, particularly if I'm going for a more vintage feel on my journal pages. And the wax seal stamp that I used has a beautiful flower image on it. I'm then going to use an edging pen, which is designed for using on glass and ceramics. And I'm rubbing that over the raised image to help it stand out. When I was looking at my journal pages, I felt that that black stamped image was a little bit too bold. And I think that's because my stays on ink pad is still really new and lets out a lot of ink. So I decided to add another layer of that transparent paper on top. And for me, that really helped to soften the look of that image, but I could still see it perfectly through that top layer of paper. And I also love having lots of layers on my pages, so I didn't mind that at all. I'm now looking through my stamps to find some that have a lovely vintage old fashioned feel to them. So anything like tickets and postmarks I thought would tie in really well with this journal spread. I often play around with the stamps for a little bit before inking them just to get a feel for how big they're going to be on my page as I'm always looking for that balance of adding lots of decorative elements to my pages but also leaving myself plenty of space to write. And I decided to use a brown coloured ink pad for each of the stamps. I'm now going to go ahead and add some more stamped images to my journal pages. I really like the look of stamped images, but I also find it's quite helpful because it breaks my journal pages up into different sections. And for me, that makes it less intimidating for me to write on because I've got much smaller spaces for me to be able to add any of the words. It doesn't feel like a massive white space for me to worry about. Now that I've finished adding all of the decorations, I'm going to move on to the journal writing. And for my date, I'm using a black Fudenosuke brush pen with a firm nib. And this came from Colt Pens, who I'll also leave linked down below. And for the journal writing itself, I'll be using a black Muji gel pen. In my journal, I'm reflecting about how things have been over the last week. 
I'd found it quite tough because my daughter returned to university, so I helped her pack everything up and drove her back. And on the one hand, I'm just so, so happy for her to be back amongst friends, people of her own age. But of course, I'm missing her like crazy. For me, it's been one of the few perks of the last 12 months, I guess, is that I've been able to enjoy lots of additional time with her that I certainly wouldn't have expected. So I'm using my journal to reflect on all of that, the kind of ups and downs, how I'm feeling. And I just found it so relaxing to be able to sit there, take some time to add some decorations to my pages and also just let a few things out about how I was feeling. And that's something I often do if something's really on my mind or I can feel that I'm emotional about something. Just taking that time out to write about it and also decorate really helps me to relax and perhaps gain a new perspective. Since taking my daughter back, I've tried to be a bit more gentle with myself and perhaps not have quite such high expectations of what I'm going to get done. But I've also really immersed myself into different creative projects and I find that helps me enormously. And one of the newest things I've taken up is embroidery. And I'm really liking that. It takes a lot of concentration, but for me at the moment, that's absolutely perfect. Well, that's me all done. I really hope you're doing well. Let me know how things are going in the comments section down below. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, it'd be great if you leave it with a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you consider subscribing. If you've got any questions or comments, then as always, please do leave them down below. I also want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. You're all absolutely wonderful. Thank you ever so much for watching and I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.